a father doesn't have to be around. The idea that a father needs to sit around like a second mother to make a child healthy is, is a fallacy. In fact, I'd say it's detrimental to the child. What is going on, my people? This is your boy, Agree to Disagree, and I'm coming at you again with some more video reviews. We got some good stuff coming your way, so let's get right into it. Yo, y'all wanna know why most men don't wanna get married? Because y'all can't afford to? Duh. I know so many dudes that are like, I want a traditional marriage. My wife should be submissive to me. What is she submitting to? Poverty? <laughs> These dudes have no house, no car, no savings, but expect their partners to do all the cooking, the cleaning, the child rearing, because that's how it went in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. You know what else happened in the 1950s? Men were supporting entire families on one salary. Yep. They were paying for the house by themselves, putting food on the table, paying for vacations, kids, clothes, everything. And listen, I'm not trying to shame modern day men. The cost of living, education, and buying a home has dramatically outpaced wages. Mm. It's not their fault. But 53% of households are now dual income, meaning they need two partners to provide financially for the numbers to work. Makes that sense. means both partners need to contribute at home too. You can't ask your working girlfriend for stay-at-home wifey privileges if you can't afford that lifestyle. 110% agree. I just talked about this in a previous video. Guys, you can't want a traditional wife if you're not willing to be a traditional husband. Back in the day, men were paying all of the bills and they can do that on one salary. It is very, very hard to do that in today's society because of the reason she mentioned here, housing went up, inflation, all of these things, which adds up to making it very difficult for a man to provide for a family on a single income. So guys, you cannot expect a woman to be a traditional wife doing all the cooking, cleaning, laundry, uh, raising the kids all by herself, but you are not paying the bills all by yourself. It's just not a fair deal. And if you keep bringing up the old days, that's how they did it in the old days. So if you're going 50-50 on the bills, it makes sense that you would go 50-50 when it comes to the responsibilities around the house as well. I want you to put in your mind, who is the ultimate feminist that you know? Take it all the way to the end of her life, the oldest, most ultimate feminist that you know, and ask yourself one question. Do you think she's happy? So if I think of who maybe the ultimate uh, feminist is right now, you've got, you've got the Chelsea Handler, right? You, uh, who, who I used to love as a child, and she, oh, you don't need a man, don't be a man, has no kids now, doesn't have a husband. I had a conversation with Dennis Prager on my show, and we talked a little bit about this feminism that's sold to us when we're young, and when you get older, if you if you don't break free of that, you'll wake up one day and realize it was a scam. And a woman commented beneath that video and she said, Candace, thank you so much for bringing this, this conversation forth for so many women to listen to. I was one of those people that fell for the scam um, when I was in my early 20s. I'm now 55, I'm unmarried, I have no kids, um, and I have to take pills to keep me happy. Um, and she said, if there's one thing I would have done differently in life is I, I wouldn't have fallen for the scam of feminism. So I stand up here proudly on this stage and I say, I'm not a feminist. Listen, I'm not a huge fan of Candace Owens, but I don't detect any lies in what she said. Modern feminism does more to hurt women than it does to help them. When we tell women that a career will make them happier than having a family, that is a problem. When we tell women that they don't need a man, when it took a man to bring them into this world, that is a problem. When we tell women that they are better off living life like a man than a woman, that is a problem. Telling women that they should aspire to work 60 plus hours just to have a chance of getting some big shot corporate position versus inspiring women to be mothers and wives are leading to many depressed women. They wanna have this big corporate position just so they can say, hey, I can do what men do. When women tend to be much happier doing the things that men can't do, such as bearing children, being a mother, being a loving wife. And that's not to say that women can't pursue a career, but when you try to tell me that career women are better off than the women who produce and raise the next generation, 
that's where you lose me. Are transgender men real men? Do your penises make you more men than us? If it, part of it's not making more or less. It's we're a, we're a biologically man. You're not a biological man. It's not a spectrum, it's so it's not, it's not a question that we can answer because you're saying on the spectrum, would this make us more of a man than you? But no, it's because we are a man and you guys aren't. Well, we're different So, men. so we're not men we're is, different. is, what you, is yeah. exactly what you just in, said. In my view, you guys are uh, appropriating the gender and you are living as a man, but biologically you are not a man. So to me, it's not, you can't say, okay, well, what make, does that make us more of a man? That's not even a question to ask because you're not a biological man. When it comes down to asking questions that make me start to change what the truth is and what the truth isn't, putting it on a spectrum when it's an objective truth, that's where I draw the line. Okay, so for you guys who haven't watched the full interview and may be confused as to what's going on here, the gentlemen on the left are actually women who have transitioned to being men and the men on the right are actual men biological men and this clip right here shows why it is important to separate feelings from logic i'm sure if you put a penis on a woman that will make her feel more like a man but it doesn't actually make her a man i can put on wolf ears and that will make me feel more like a wolf but it's not going to make me a wolf. If I was to lose my penis, God forbid, in some tragic accident, it's reasonable to think that I may feel less of a man. But my identity would never truly be in question because I know deep down that I am a man. It is just a objective truth. I don't need to grow up my beard or take hormone pills to make myself more of a man because I am one. Now, if you're a woman who likes to dress like a man, fine. But if you think that disguising yourself as a man somehow makes you an actual man, then ma'am, you are delusional and I would advise seeking professional help. A father doesn't have to be around. The idea that a father needs to sit around like a second mother to make a child healthy is, is a fallacy. In fact, I'd say it's detrimental to the child. I see all these dudes out here, they have a kid and they basically become mother number two. Everyone should look at their father like a superhero. That's what you should genuinely view him as. It's hard to be a superhero if you're home every day arguing with your wife changing diapers. That's not what a man should do. Andrew Tate has some pretty bad takes, but this has got to be one of the worst takes I've ever heard from him. As a father myself, I understand the importance my presence is to my kids. How can my sons know how to be a good man if I don't teach them how to be one? And fathers aren't just important in their sons' lives, but to their daughters as well. How can you complain about women with daddy issues, but then contribute to the issue by creating women with daddy issues? But see, those are the type of women that Andrew Tate likes to keep around because it's those type of women that Andrew Tate can manipulate. It's women with daddy issues that he can use for his adult webcam business. See, Andrew Tate doesn't want men raising upstanding, respectable young women because those aren't the women that he can use for his businesses. Those aren't the women that he can manipulate and seduce. We need to eliminate this idea that only mothers are important when it comes to raising children. Although I do believe that women are natural nurturers, that doesn't excuse men from any responsibility when it comes to parenting. There needs to be a balance in the household. Women are less likely to grow up hating men when they have a loving father around. Men are less likely to fall into a second childhood when they have a positive male role model to show them how it's done. Fathers are equally as important when it comes to parenting. And if we're looking at the black community specifically, we need to help eliminate this stereotype of the absent black father. We need to push our men to be better fathers, more active fathers, and more present fathers. All right, guys, that's all I got for this one. If you like the content, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you thought of the video. What points did you agree with? What points did you disagree with? Leave your comments below and let me know what you thought. And if you got anything out of this video, hit that like button. This is Agree to Disagree. I'm out.